turn to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15 this morning. Luke chapter 15. And here we are, hard to believe, 2020. So I titled the message this morning, We Need 2020 Vision. Amen? Amen. We do. We need a 2020 vision. I was reminded uh, the other day that there was a time, and even when you look at, and I know many people have gone, as you, you look at the picture as you come through the hall of house, house full, back, and staying true to back seat back, this, normally the front pews were a little bit empty, but full from on back. And I know many of those people have gone on to be with the Lord. But I've heard from more than one person that there was a time when the whole community was involved in some type of way at Bob Baptist Church, the whole Amen. community. And um, so as I look around this morning and I ask the question, where are they? It's a good question to ask. Where are they? And it would be tempting to use a verse, and I myself have used this verse out of context, of 1 John 2.19, that they left out from us, but they were not of us. But if you look in context, that verse is referring to false teachers. He said there were false teachers amongst us. They're gone now, but they showed their true colors. That's what really what that verse applies to. So we couldn't really apply that verse to those empty pews. We could apply Hebrews 10 and 25 though, which says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as together as the manner of some. Some have simply just forsaked coming to the Lord's house. They have just stopped. So, here's my question. What do we do about the sum? Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the matter of some. So, my question this morning is, as we try to develop a 2020 vision, what do we do about the sum? There are some that have simply stopped coming. There are some that are out living for the world. There are some that are on dope, addicted to drugs. There are some that are addicted to alcohol and they're staying drunk. There are some that have departed, that have no desire to come to church. What do we do about the sum? That's what I want to talk about this morning. So look in Luke chapter 15, verse 1. We know the parable of the lost sheep. Luke 15 and verse 1. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. He was always surrounded by a rough and rowdy crowd. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This was the religious crowd saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, because a lot of them would have had sheep, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say to you that, likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just people who need no repentance. And I want to pray right there. Father God, 
speak through me this morning in this message. I pray that you give me a vision to reach that which is lost, to reach those some that have departed from us, to go after the some, to bring them you, Lord Jesus. Bless the preaching of your word, and it's in your name I pray. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. You could read the next parable, if you're still there, verses 8 through 10. Likewise, or that a woman, in Luke 15, verse 8, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then he goes and he gives another parable of the lost son. So I want to talk about the sum that we do not see in the empty pews amongst us this morning. Now, Luke 15, verses 1 through 7 is often misinterpreted. And I say this as just, just, and they're using many times, I wouldn't say misinterpreted, but they use it in a sermon that is speaking of those that lead the, sh the church, that the shepherd is to lead the 99, those that are here, and to go after the one lost church member and to go and get them. But I, I don't believe that's the main point of the message here. The main point of Jesus' story as he's talking to the Billy Grahams of the day, the religious crowd. The main point of Jesus' story is Jesus' passion for the lost. That's the main point right there. It's Jesus' passion for the drug addict. It's Jesus' passion for the drunk. The main point of the story is the 99 are where they need to be. But there's one down there that's hooked on drugs, and that's where Jesus is going to be to reach him back. He wants him saved. Yeah. It's the passion that Jesus has for the sexually immoral. Jesus' passion was given to the first century church as a pattern and as a mission. This pattern and mission is to be followed by us today, or we have no right to call ourselves a church. If we do not follow this first century apostolic pattern, and I'm fixing to share it with you, it's a perfect vision of Acts 1.8. Here's the vision. This is the mission. Acts 1.8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And if I added anything to the Word of God for personal application, I would say, and for Little River and for Bob community. Amen. To reach the lost. Oh, we need to catch the vision of Jesus if we're going to be able to call ourselves a church in 2020. Turn with me there in Luke. Let's turn to Luke chapter 4 now. Luke chapter 4. I want to see if we can catch Jesus' vision for the lost. If we can put aside our bias and our judgmental attitudes and look at the people the way Jesus sees them. Luke 4 and 16 through 21. Now Jesus is getting ready to teach in the synagogue. And boy, he's really, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to show you something here that I didn't see until I listened to a message yesterday, and I listened to it again this morning, and I want you to catch what he does here. It's very, very important. Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 16. So he, Jesus, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. This is his hometown. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Watch this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, Jesus is quoting Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, but I want to show you something very significant. Notice the next verse in verse 20. It says, after he read that last verse to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, in verse 20 it said, he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendants. And I believe he didn't quote that last verse for a reason. He was quoting Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. And if you turn there, the last verse of what he was quoting, he should have said this. The next verse that comes that our Lord Jesus left out in the synagogue that day because he was trying to get a point across was, and the day of vengeance of our God. He left that verse out. And I believe there's no accident in Scripture. I mean, it says he closed the book and he sat down. Jesus could have quoted that part, but he said, I'm going to sit down. I've said enough. I don't need to say that part because this is why I have come. You have seen this scripture fulfilled. I don't want vengeance to come on those sinful people that are addicted to drugs. I don't want that person that's an alcoholic to go to hell. So he left out in the day of vengeance of our God. Jesus was quoting Isaiah 61 and he sat down after that because he says, look here. I've got a mission. I've got a vision. I've got a book. And I'm going to hand this book to my church. And the gates of hell are not going to be able to overcome it. I've got a message of hope to go down there to that drug addict. i got a message of hope to go down there to that person that's caught in sin. So he left out the vengeance part. Now we know that our God is a God of judgment and vengeance. But that wasn't the point he was trying to get across to. Because this is why I have come, to save those people, Jesus says. I don't want that drug addict to stay on drugs. I don't want that drunk to remain a drunk. I don't want that sheep to remain lost. Because I have a bride, a church, that is going to bring a message of grace and mercy to them. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus, Jesus has called all of you that are in here at Bob Baptist Church, if you call yourselves Christians, He's called you to get out of the bleachers and onto the mission field. Amen or oh my. Amen. And you may not go to Africa. You may not go to uh, Judea and to Samaria and all the other outer parts of the earth, but you can go next door to your neighbor. You can go over here at the supermarket. You can go down here on the river. You can go wherever it is, right here in Bob community. We have a mission field that's all around us. And I believe in 2020 that the Holy Spirit is calling for God's people to get back to that apostolic message, to get out of the bleachers and get on the field and get down there where it's dirty, where those people are using needles and drugs and not doing what they're doing, but bringing them a message of mercy and grace and love that says, hey, I know a carpenter from Nazareth that can break that bondage. You may be full of demons right now, but my Jesus can set you free. My Jesus is a chain breaker. So he left out that verse about vengeance because it's all about Jesus. He knew he was talking to a religious, snobby crowd. They could not stand the fact that he was hanging out with all those drunks, with all those misfits, but that was Jesus' crowd. He says, I don't need 
to come after those that need no position. I'm coming after the ones that are sick. Each one of you, if you are call yourself a Christian, you are called to be a missionary. You are called to be a missionary. Right here to the folks in this community. And let me tell you this. It's not just for the hired hand. The hired hand is committing himself to the reading of God's word, the study of God's word, praying and fasting over this congregation. And you... The people of the church are to go out into the highways and the byways and on the river and in their community to the people that you really, if you were honest, don't like. And to share with them the message of hope and of love. And I know you don't know the history of some of these folks. And I'm so thankful I don't because I probably would have bias too. That's what happened. But Jesus knows their history. Let's see what he has to say about it. Turn to Luke chapter 6. My, my, my. I'm going to read it. It's going to hurt. Lord have mercy. You don't know about some of those folks. They're never going to change. Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 27. I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do likewise to them. But watch this in verse 32, because this is how a lot of us act in the church. I myself included have been guilty of this. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. Watch this. But love your enemies. Do good and lend hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high for he is kind notice who he's kind to to the unthankful and to the evil therefore be merciful just as your father also is merciful we're already committed to we're halfway there. Let's keep on going. Verse 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. See, that crowd that Jesus was dealing with was judging those folks that Jesus was trying to save, and we're guilty of the same thing. We're guilty of it. Give. Verse 38, and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put to your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? And I believe the church has lost this vision. We've become blind of what's going on around us. A disciple, in verse 40, is not above his teacher, and everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Now watch this, verse 41. I really didn't want to hear this this morning when the Holy Spirit spoke it to me. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck that's in your eye, when you yourself do not see that the plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. 
First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. In other words, I'm going to come look at this one, and I'm going to knock them out with a plank that's sticking out because I see a little bit of speck in theirs. But I don't notice that I've got a plank in my own. There are a bunch of folks, guys, in our community, on this river, in our workplaces that need the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And may I add, it's the grace and the mercy that was extended to you and to I. The Bible says, while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. I believe we will be held accountable. Regardless, regardless of what they do, regardless of if, if they use what the church is trying to do, what Jesus just told me, besides all of that, we've got to do everything we can. When we stand before him, we did everything that we could to share the love, the mercy, and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm here to ask you, how many missionaries do I have sitting in here this morning? Are there any? And Isaiah says, who? Who can I send? Who will go? It's amazing. We can pray all day long that Holy Spirit, I pray you just drag them into that parking lot and they'll come. They're not going to come until we go where they're at. That's what Jesus did. He left the 99 and he went after the lost sheep. Guys, we have a very, very sick community. And I'm not just talking about here. DeVille, Pollock in general, Little River, the whole world is sick. But we have a message of hope. Just like my brother so, do you know my friend? His name is Jesus. I love that. And I thank the Holy Spirit. Give that word. Just at the right time, what Adrian Rogers said. The only thing that separates us from that drug addict, from that one that's shooting up with needles, from that drunk, is that we have Jesus. We need to bring them Jesus. He says, I, I'm not going to share when he got up in that synagogue, that the vintage, because I'm long-suffering. I want whosoever will. I want everybody saved. But I've got to have my church folks that's going to do it. And I'm here to say, if we're not going to be missionaries, it's easy to go and send our money and disperse it and go to Africa. But if we're not going to be missionaries to our next door neighbors, we have no right to call ourselves a church. That's Bible. That's what Jesus says. If we're not going to tell our family and our friends, about Jesus. He says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my God. Are you confessing Jesus? Are you sharing Jesus? That's what pastor is asking of the congregation. Guys, and I believe this is what we want sometimes. Well, clean them up, then we'll bring them in. That ain't how it works. We want them to come in dirty as all get out with all of your sin and I want the Holy Ghost. I want them to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ because that's the only way that I can stand before Him. My greatest deeds are but filthy rags before Him. Well, Acts 1-8, that's our mission for 2020. Maybe you're here this morning and you failed in that mission. You want to come and you want to repent of that. Whatever the Lord's laid on you. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never truly surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I am a preacher that I believe in grace and I do believe in the Lordship. He's not only Savior, He is what? Lord. Is He Lord of your life? You stood before him, and he said, why should I let you in my head? 
what would you say? And I'm going to say the blood of Jesus and his grace and his mercy. Let's be a church that extends grace and mercy to those around us. We stand and say, what hymn are we going to?